to take apart the Tascam 234 sync cassette. I'm going to start unplugging cables and removing printed circuit boards from the right hand side of the unit as you look at it from the front. Here we've got the DBX boards. I know that because uh, these chips say DBX on them and I can read. From the point of view of reassembly, I suppose it would be possible to get this pair of cables mixed up and this pair of cables mixed up because they've both got 5 pin and then 6 pin KK Molex connectors respectively. So note that this one, which I'm saying is the left post, is kind of distinctive because it's got a solid red, black and blue cable amongst them whereas these are all white and something striped cables on the right hand side. And then of these, it's orange and yellow ribbon cables that are on the right, whereas it's the white and grey ribbon cables on the left. Without putting any pressure on the wires going into the crimps on them and just pulling on the plastic itself, then those will come out by hand. All of these are running to this little daughter board, which has got the noise reduction in out switch on it. We'll be removing that shortly. This board's on a sort of hinge mechanism. If I unscrew these two screws, there's a short, narrow ferrule, larger size of screwdriver. You can see them and mark them up as pink. Um, I'm color coding my compartments as I go along, taking this apart because there's so many kinds of screw. Then that tips. Um, that gives you easier access to the core playback board here. Uh, the point being, I suppose, that there are various adjustable inductors and uh, trim pots that allow you to do the calibration, uh, which you wouldn't be able to access if this was laying flat. Both of these are holders are slotted in such a way that I can then, I think I need a little bit more give before I can take that out. Probably what I'll need to do is unscrew this bracket on the right. So there's one screw that you can see in camera, there's another one, I don't know if you can see it or not. Can you see it from that angle? I'm tapping with the screwdriver, so it's under here. Well, that's not off completely, but now I've got a bit enough give that that will slide out. And uh, the screws that are holding that are longer, I mean they're the same width of ferrule, but longer ones go through there for the point of view of reconstruction. This is what I was saying about slot. So I'll act like a hinge till you get to a certain angle and then you can push back. I see, you know, I can't pull it out from that angle for instance. Then you have access to the underneath of this if you needed to do any recapping or refilling of solder etc. I'm going to leave this bracket on the far side in for now because uh, via two plastic clips here you can see that that's what's keeping this board in the centre, it's only just in shot, and that's got the oscillators and relays on it. So I'll leave that in for now and focus on, first of all, unplugging any cables that are connecting to this board, and then I'll move the camera around so you can just see the two screws removed. Now this is the DBX switch. We've got a longish cable that's coming from this relay oscillator board. That's terminating on a header. With this 8 pin connector, the brown and red on the left side of it, you see I've written DBX switch on it in Sharpie so I'll know where to put it back. Then on the other side of that, there's a little 2 pin Molex connector. Let's tidy it up, up with some cable ties here. It's coming around here. Try to see where it ends up. And board underneath here maybe. Anyway. Last of all, and this seems to be coming from the power conditioning board. You can see with all these filter capacitors and these rectifiers and all this kind of stuff on there. So that's the board that's uh, taking the output of the AC step down transformer and uh, turning that into direct current that could be used by the rest of the system. So down here, I'll take, I mean, it's actually connecting to this core playback board, but just so I've unplugged all the cables that I need to. In fact, is that going to come out? That's not really going to come out without removing that, but let's take note of that now anyway. It's got red, yellow, black, and red cables, and that's going into the core playback board, so that's how that board's receiving power. In my arbitrary system for organising these screws, I've decided that these two are going to be brown. They require the smaller of the two sizes of crosshead screwdriver. Let's hit 
they look stubby little narrow feral guys. Sort of anodized black. At that point, I hope you can see just at the top of the screen there, the TBX switch is loose from the chassis. Um, but you know, it's not completely loose because it's got a whole bunch of cables soldered into the lower half of it So it's just kind of suspended above the record playback board at the moment. Well, I've got the camera in this angle I'm going to undo these four screws the RCA sockets So we've got two out here line out sockets here and the line in the sockets here They're all wired into the record playback board So if we're going to lift that out then these screws do need to be removed first Again, in my arbitrary system for keeping the multitude of different screw types that are part of this build separate from each other, I'm deciding that these are... Now these right two, <laughs> this is super annoying to be honest, it's actually a nut and bolt system. Uh, so there's actually these little bolts on the far side. It's just, I don't know, like surely that should have been someone's fucking job but to ask him to go, you know, let's maybe make use of three times of the screw. All our other units only use about three types of screw. Can we, can we keep it the three types of screw in this build, guys? But no. No. A gazillion different kinds of screw is what we've got. Yeah, so those sockets are just dangling on a panel down there. Excuse the blown out lighting. I've got the aperture in this camera all way open, so you've got another light. I'm um, just around the corner, you can see where I'm tapping. That's where the TBX switch was. We've got one, I think it's the only one though, the only screw like this in the entire fucking belt, which I'm going to keep it in a cyan blue compartment. And that's holding on this little metal bracket, stopping these two daughter boards that are part of this record playback board here from rattling around too much. Uh, so that's... Narrow ferrule, there's a sort of tapering tip to the ferrule, it's double dome. So that needs to be removed before we can get that record playback amp out. We're moving towards taking this bracket off, um, so really we're going to have to remove this relay and oscillate our board first. So let's detach any cables running from there to the record playback board and also any Cables running from the VU meters here and little daughter boards that have jack sockets and so on on them. So the meters um, at this end, the right end if you're looking at it from here, um, there's a cable just here. It's uh, five pins on it. Oh man, the thing about Scotland is like most of the time it's really grey, but you know if it's going to be sunny, it's going to be sunny for like 20 seconds at a time in such a way that you're fucking blinded and you can't use your camera. Favorite turning down peak blind so I can fucking see what I'm doing. And then at the other end, there's yellow ribbon of cables. It's another five pin. You can see this little L-shaped cutout. The group of capacitors here. The headers right there. In fact, there's one more cable that's is attaching those meters. I'll detach that later, I'll leave those meters in situ for now. Now we've got a bunch of four thick-ish red, orange, blue and yellow, so that's going to be your brown one, red two, orange three, yellow, channel four, and uh, those are splitting off into three thinner cables and headers that are distributed along here. The, the individual cables are quite fragile, so I'm going to pull those out pliers. Just tuck them out of the way. This cable I'm wiggling here, that goes down to the headphone socket, which is in the bottom right corner of this panel here. And then per channel we've got a three pin red header connecting to a white ribbon cable and a pair of coloured cables per channel. So here's four yellow, three orange, to red etc and they're connected to the pan and input gain for each of the four inputs so if I just grab the plastic and detach those you can see I've also detached this orange one on a black header there where's that running I'm not entirely sure what that is that may be a power thing but anyway it's um, 
be a couple of zip ties here it's ending up in the well if we're looking at it from here the top left corner of this board cables are coming around here and uh, terminating in a black and a white header respectively they're both four pins so yeah, but because the header and connectors match in the color of plastic you shouldn't get those mixed up oh yeah and here's this um, power cable powering that board that we identified earlier there are a couple of connections here but I think they're actually soldered in that's the headphone pot I'll just unscrew that quickly there that's what I was just unscrewing so there's a washer and a nut for that I'm using the 11 millimeter socket from a socket set but you could just use a pair of needle nose pliers to detach that put those back on so I don't lose them so we could look at removing this bracket um, like I say, there's two plastic clips that are via this bracket keeping this relay and oscillator board upright. So the way they work, there's a little plastic pin. If you push those, push that out, then you can pull on the far side. I'll show you this close up in a second. This pushes through this part, and um, when you put that back in, if those four little bits that splay out are pushed in together and it'll pass through the hole and then when this pin goes in there it widens them out so that's too wide to get through the hole and it's sort of trapped so on reassembly the way we would put them back is sort of roll them with our fingers so that that splayed bit is closed push it through the hole and then from the same side push through this and to open it in the first place I'm just pushing the centre with you know something sharp-ish like the point of this screwdriver yeah, so that's now loose and rattling around I can unscrew these two screws which are the last ones holding this bracket on and holding down that record playback board I think so okay and those screws are going in my arbitrarily coloured pink pile these are the screws that are most common in the construction of the 244 and the 246. I'm not sure what this 1 slash 5 is. <laughs> it must have meant something to me. Um, but you can see I'm saying control, bias, black clips and record play back. I've done an E instead of a B. I'm dyslexic. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm basically pointing out to myself, to my future self, where this goes back. I'll set up a different camera at my angle before I show you that there are some still some cables underneath to detach. Just going handheld for a moment. Hope you can see there's a little hole in this board. There's various wires that are soldered near the board that are disappearing through it. And uh, they join into a ribbon cable here. And that's turning onto a header there. It's connecting onto this board. That's got all the like instrument input trim gubbins on it. I mean, I can tip forward like that, and it's easier to see that we've got another two connectors here. There aren't any other ones of that length and colour, so that should be pretty easy to figure out what goes where. Oh, and there's a two pin red connector that's running over to this relay and oscillator board here. Right, so this record playback board comes away. You can see there's a bunch of um, transistors and resistors on these little door boards here, so that would pull out if you needed to get back better access to this board, for instance, or something. As I mentioned earlier, the step you might be missing here is that there is actually a hole for a central. See where my finger is there? Um, there would be a screw there that's going onto the plate underneath. And probably if I were going to do this again, then when I was removing this plate to access that one cable that went to the transport, then I would unscrew that screw. And so what you'd end up is this side of this separator, metal separator, I'm not really sure what to get called that, would kind of end up still attached. <laughs> it's quite difficult to line up. Yeah, but I mean, it would s s still be there. And so this would come away with this attached. 
But it just, you know, when I was trying to take this apart without really any idea what I was doing, I happened to unscrew it from that side first. But 